Welcome to another minor moment. Here we are in the library in the history of medicine lair with Chris Houlihan, star of our show, along with something quite interesting he's got sitting on the table in front of him. Tell us about this, Chris. Well, this is obviously a surgical kit, but it has a special association for us because it belonged to a Rochester surgeon, a very prominent Rochester surgeon by the name of William Smith Ely. He was born in Rochester in 1842. His father was a physician, and when the younger Ely graduated from the University of Rochester in 1861, he went into a, a preceptorship in his father's office. That was very, it was common for young men before they went to medical school to spend a year or more in a physician's office learning how to deliver babies, uh, wrap bandages, set bones, and so on and so forth. And, uh, but Ely didn't get the chance to go to medical school uh, immediately. The Civil War intervened. And in 1862, August of 1862, after less than a year's training in his father's office, the 20-year-old William Smith Ely was made an assistant surgeon with the 108th New York Volunteers. Uh, Ely served with the 108th through the Antietam campaign, and there's some wonderful photographs that, that were taken of, of his unit in the field, at the field hospital. Let me see if I can get a good look at that, Chris. Interesting. And um, we're not sure who took these photographs, but it's part, part of the Ely collection. And then in 1863, Ely was ordered to the U.S. General Hospital at Annapolis, Maryland. And these are his orders, and it's kind of fun because these orders are signed by Secretary of War Edwin Stanton. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. Wow. Thanks. And Ely served for the rest of the war within, at Annapolis. There's also a wonderful series of photographs of Annapolis at, at both the, the U.S. General Hospital, Army General Hospital, and the, the, the village of Annapolis, which we won't do today because we want to look at, at this, this surgical kit. These are not uncommon. Surgical kits came in all, all sizes. They were, they were big kits. They were pocket kits. But this is kind of the Cadillac version of, of, of a surgical kit. It was given to him by his commanding officer, whose name was Van der Kieft, and um, <clears throat> it was given to him actually after the war. So this was not used at Antietam or at Annapolis. It was given to William Smith Ely in 1866 when Van der Kieft came to visit him. It was manufactured in New York by Hernstein. And it's, it's a really fo focused on, on for a military surgeon. There are the wide varieties of what kind of instruments could be included in a surgical kit. This is generally an amputation kit. You can see that, that we have bone saws, um, chisels, elevators. In the bottom portion here, we have a series of knives, both, both the small scapula that would be used for, for any operation, but also these large knives, which, which were actually um, amputation knives to get through thick muscle, to get through ligaments and cartilage, before the, the bone saws would be, would be applied. Uh, there's, there's a little head saw here for, for sawing bone in the cranium, a, a trepanation set, uh, trephines were used for removing bone fragments from the cranium, What's that thing that looks like a bicycle chain? That also is a is a saw, um, but I'm not sure exactly how how it was used. But but it, it is it is a tiny saw that could be wrapped around something. And there's that even looks a, wicked. Even a, yes, it does. There's even a little finger saw. Yikes! But Ely certainly used instruments like this at Antietam and. Um, it's a terrific little kit. It's uh, very carefully, as you can see, very carefully constructed. Well, that whole piece and comes out, whole and piece then comes underneath out. we have. And in the bottom portion, we have we have yet more kinds of in instruments. We have probes, bone chisels. They look pretty fearsome. Ele elevators, um, shears for, for for cutting ribs or cartilage. It gets pretty. Oh, goodness. Um, forceps, probably for moving foreign objects like, like bullets or, or whatever. Um, there's two, two sets of shears. It's a lovely kit. It's complete. 
And uh, when Ely came back from the Civil War, he uh, went to New York and, w and actually went to medical school, graduating in 1867. So he did, be, did get his medical degree, then returned from New York to Rochester, where he um, went into practice with his father, William Watson Ely. And the younger Ely was, was very instrumental in um, in the surgical, in making the surgical department of what is now, what was then the Rochester City Hospital, now Rochester General Hospital, um, a very important place. And he headed surgery there and died in Rochester after a long and distinguished career in 1911. The photographs, the instruments, all came to the university. Um, we're not sure what year. And um, it's, it's one of our more interesting collections, um, small as it may be. The photographs are outstanding. and. Uh, that there's a lot of very interesting documentation. There's another photograph here that we didn't get a good look at. I'm not sure which one we did look at, but this, this is one of the, there's, there's two Antietam photographs, uh, which I think there's, there's probably a half dozen in the entire series. There's one. Is this the hospital? Well, that yes, that's the field hospital. It would all be set up in tents. People, they, they might appropriate a farmhouse as well, if one was nearby, or a barn, or a church, or any large building, but also um, tents like this were, were standard. Hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Interesting. See you next time okay. on Minor Moments.